Hi, we are now at a new section of this video course. Input, Output, Physical Format and Logical Layout. In the previous section, we explored about functional and reactive programming features. In this section, we will start with using pathlib to work with file names, reading and writing files with context managers and replacing a file while preserving the previous version. We will then learn how to read delimited files with the CSV module, read complex formats using regular expressions, JSON documents, XML documents, and HTML documents. We will then step ahead to upgrade CSV from Dict Reader to Named Tuple Reader and to Namespace Reader. Finally, we will see how to use multiple contexts for reading and writing files. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with using pathlib to work with file names. In this video, we will make the output file name from the input file name and a number of sibling output files. We will then create a directory and a number of files. Also, we will compare the file dates to see which is newer, remove a file and find all files that match a given pattern. It's important to separate two concepts, the path that identifies a file and the contents of the file. The path provides an optional sequence of directory names and the final file name. It may provide some information about the file contents via the file name extension. The directory includes the file's name, information about when the file was created, who owns it, what the permissions are, how big it is, and other details. The contents of the file are separate from the directory information and the name. In Python, the pathlib module handles all of the path-related processing. The module makes several distinctions among paths, like pure paths that may or may not refer to an actual file, and concrete paths that are resolved and refer to an actual file. This distinction allows us to create pure paths for files that our application will likely create or refer to. We can also create concrete paths for those files that actually exist on the OS. An application can resolve a pure path to create a concrete path. The pathlib module also makes a distinction between Linux path objects and Windows path objects. This distinction is rarely needed. Most of the time we don't want to care about the OS level details of the path. An important reason for using pathlib is because we want processing that is identical irrespective of the underlying OS. The cases where we might want to work with a pure Linux path object are rare. Now, let's move to the Python command shell. Open the code file and run the module. All of the tasks which we will be performing in this video will leverage this command. We rarely need any of the other class definitions from pathlib. Let's add a few more commands. We presume that argpass is used to gather the file or directory names. Also, we use the options variable, which has the input file name or directory name that we work with. For demonstration purposes, a mock argument passing is shown here by providing this namespace object. We also define the path for input, file1, and file2. This options object has three mock argument values. The input value is a pure path. It doesn't necessarily reflect an actual file. The file1 and file2 values reflect concrete paths that exist on my computer. This object behaves the same as the options created by the argpass module. Now, Let's show a number of common path name manipulations as separate small tasks. So we start with making the output file name by changing the input suffix. Let's define the input path. First, we create the path object from the input file name string. The path class will properly pass the string to determine the elements of the path. In this example, the Windows path class is displayed because I am using Windows OS. Now we create the output path object using the with suffix method. All of the file name passing is handled seamlessly by the path class. The with underscore suffix method 
saves us from manually passing the text of the file name. Now we move ahead to make a number of sibling output files with distinct names, create a path object from the input file name string. The path class will properly pass the string to determine the elements of the path. In this example, the Windows path class is displayed. As I said earlier, this is because I'm using Windows OS. After this, we extract the parent directory and the stem from the file name. The stem is the name without the suffix. Next, build the desired output name. For this example, we append underscore pass to the file name. An input file of file.csv will produce an output of file underscore pass.csv. Then build the complete path object. The backslash operator assembles a new path from path components. We need to put this in parentheses to be sure that it's performed first and creates a new path object. The input underscore directory variable has the parent path object, and the output underscore stem underscore pass is a simple string. After assembling a new path with the backslash operator, the with underscore suffix method is used to assure a specific suffix is used. Now let's jump right in to create a directory and a number of files. Here we start by creating the path object from the input file name string. The path class will properly pass the string to determine the elements of the path. In this example, the Windows path class is displayed because I'm using Windows OS. Next, we create the path object for the output directory. In this case, we create an output directory as a subdirectory with the same parent directory as the source file. Then we need to create the output file name using the output path object. In this example, the output directory will contain a file that has the same name as the input with a different suffix, which is .src. Here we've used the backslash operator to assemble a new path object from the parent path and a string based on the stem of a file name. Once a path object has been created, we can use the with underscore suffix method to set the desired suffix for the file. Now, let's compare file dates to see which is newer. We define the path OFR file 1 and file 2 and use the path.stat function. So we create the path object from the input file name strings. The path class will properly pass the string to determine the elements of the path. Then use the stat method of each path object to get timestamps for the file. This method returns a stat object. Within that stat object, the st underscore m time attribute of that object provides the most recent modification time for the file. The values are timestamps measured in seconds. We can easily compare the two values to see which is newer. If we want a timestamp that's sensible to people, we can use the date time module to create a proper date time object. Let's use it. We can use the strftime method to format the date time object, or we can use the ISO format method to provide a standardized display. Note that the time will have the local time zone offset implicitly applied to the OS timestamp. Depending on the OS configuration, a laptop may not show the same time as the server that created it because they are in different time zones. Let's see how we could remove a file. The Linux term for removing a file is unlinking. Since a file may have many links, the actual data isn't removed until all links are removed. So we start here by creating the path object from the input file name string. The path class will properly pass the string to determine the elements of the path. Next, we use the unlink method of this path object to remove the directory entry. If this was the last directory entry for the data, then the space can be reclaimed by the OS. If the file does not exist, a file not found error is raised. In some cases, this exception needs to be silenced with the pass statement. In other cases, a warning message might be important. It's also possible that a missing file represents a serious error. Additionally, we can rename a file using the rename method of a path object. We can create new soft links 
using the sim link to method. To create OS level hard links, we need to use the os.link function. The last thing to do is this, finding all the files that match a given pattern. We create the path object from the input directory name. The path class will properly pass the string to determine the elements of the path. Then we use the glob method of the path object to locate all files that match a given pattern. By default, this will not recursively walk the entire directory tree. Let's dive into the working of all these operations. Inside the OS, a path is a sequence of directories. In a name such as this one, the root directory backslash contains a directory named users. This contains a subdirectory slot which contains documents which contains writing. In some cases, a simple string representation is used to summarize the navigation from root to directory through to the final target directory. The string representations, however, make many kinds of path operations into complex string passing problems. The path class definition simplifies many operations on pure paths. A pure path may or may not reflect actual file system resources. Operations on path include these examples. First, it extracts the parent directory, as well as a sequence of all enclosing directory names. Next, it extracts the final name, the stem of the final name, and the suffix of the final name. Then, it replaces the suffix with a new suffix or replace the entire name with a new name. It converts a string to a path and also converts a path to a string. Many OS functions and parts of Python prefer to use file name strings. Lastly, it builds a new path object from an existing path joined with a string using the backslash operator. A concrete path represents an actual file system resource. For concrete paths, we can do a number of additional manipulations of the directory information. You could determine what kind of directory entry this is, an ordinary file, a directory, a link, a socket, a named pipe or FIFO, a block device or a character device. Also, get the directory details. This includes information such as timestamps, permissions, ownership, size and so on. We can also modify these things. We can unlink or remove the directory entry. Just about anything we might want to do with directory entries for files can be done with the pathlib module. The few exceptions are part of the OS or OS.path module. Fantastic! In this video, we have used pathlib to work with file names.